thank you for being here this evening. This is the third and last session of uh, Residency Fair. And uh, our aim is to uh, showcase the residency programs that are here in the Valley and affiliated or and sponsored by our School of Medicine. Uh, and um, uh, to allow our students uh, to learn some basic information about graduate medical education uh, and then specific information, especially for our, our seniors, um, specific information about these residency programs. Uh, they're at the point now where they're beginning to write their ERIS applications and formulate their strategies for applying to residency. So this is a good time for this uh, introduction. So with that, um, I'd first like to welcome uh, Dr. Andrew Dentino, uh, who is, uh, as you probably know, the chair of the Department of Medicine. He's also our vice dean for academic affairs and um, has been, I think, are you still uh, working on the Accreditation Council on Graduate Medical Education, Dr. Dentino? Um, yes, Dr. Fish, thank you so much. Uh, in 2020, I was elected to the board of directors of the yes. Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education for the term 2020-2026. Okay, so right, right in the center of things. And for those of you who may not know, the ACGME is the governing body for all graduate medical education in the United States. So Dr. Dentino, uh, this evening Thanks. we'll be talking about internal medicine and our, and our transition program. And if you'd like to go ahead and uh, do a brief introduction. Sure, sure. Thanks so much. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm on my phone, so I don't see everybody who's on right now, but welcome, everybody. Uh, and this is uh, one internist speaking to, uh, there, I can scroll through. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is just one internist speaking to other potential future internists, or if you're here for the transitional. Dr. Natina, we just, we just lost you. Yeah, I'm still here. There Thank you, go. you. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, or, or if you're going to uh, visit with us uh, for a year in transitional, wherever that, wherever that, that horizon takes you in your professional career. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of focus my statements to begin with on internal medicine, uh, mostly speaking with uh, MS4s. Um, many of you have heard me say this, and if not, I apologize for being trite. Uh, I, I really uh, think and believe that whereas we say we pick the specialty, and so many times the specialty picks us, whether we're doing our OB rotation and we just, we just get it whether we're doing peds and, and we see that four-year-old with malaise and we, we find out their strap and we treat and the kid two weeks later is bouncing around the playground, um, whether we're in surgery and, and we really see someone, <laughs> if, dare I say at death's doorstep and, and that gallbladder comes out and, and life is good. So um, for those of you who maybe have experienced that uh, and are here to learn more about internal medicine or for those of you who experienced something altogether different, you know, red onc, uh, it, whatever it is, and, and the transitional year is the, your path uh, towards there, then, then welcome. Uh, so speaking as an internist, I am going to say a second thing, which even beyond sounding trite may, may just sound uh, almost banal. Uh, I love internal medicine. I, 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 I <clears throat> and, and those of you uh, faculty on the call, um, if, if, if when I said that you went, yeah, well, that's because we're internists. And just like a, you know, a gaggle of pediatricians would, would say the same thing when they're huddled around a, a little, a little tyke or, uh, you know, whether a group of surgeons would say the same, uh, for, for internal medicine, I, I really ascribe to, uh, kind of the paradigm that, that, uh, Dr. Osler established, a, a set of five generations or, or 120 ish years ago when he established the first real formal, uh, conceptualized, comprehensive uh, thought in, in uh, what is health and disease uh, at Johns Hopkins. Uh, and so we tend to say, for instance, family versus internal. Uh, the, family met, the family physician knows everything uh, about the person and how to keep that person well. 
uh, the family physician knows the entire world uh, at a depth of half an inch. And they know that that compendium of world uh, um, health and health and wellness, they can get that person to an appropriate uh, spe specialist, or if not, they can maybe do it themselves. We, on the other hand, whereas it, family medicine physicians are, are in, my, in, a, in one certain paradigm, are, are there to keep healthy people healthy, internists are there to take care and take charge when people are sick. And as such, uh, the internist should really feel that not to our, our mortal finite end, but uh, to the best of our ability that we're gonna go there with the patient. We're gonna, we're gonna grind it out. We're gonna be there in the unit. We're gonna be there uh, when it's, you know, when they're, you know, when the BMT patient is nadering, when, when the, the chemo patient's nadering or, or wherever that patient is profoundly ill, we're right there with them. Or we hopefully have, will hone that, that special sixth sense, if you will, to where, to know who's gonna crash, who's gonna crump. And then that moment where we go from being reactive to proactive. Some of you might be on your sub eyes. Some of you might be uh, uh, getting ready and, and really kind of cataloging and, 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 and charting and, and being a, cl a clerical person. But then to the moment when you know, wow, if I think about this, if I think about this patient's blood gas status and, and respiratory and clinical picture, what, what they're gonna look like in six, 12 and 24 hours. So that's one of the many reasons uh, internal medicine is such a, a uh, fulfilling uh, career uh, path, certainly for me. Secondly, you can go anywhere in medicine uh, with a with more than a dozen uh, subspecialties right there in the middle, uh, with uh, administration and executive leadership uh, for 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 that direction as well. Uh, primary care and then hospital, the, the the newest uh, field of hospital medicine. Um, the internist also in many uh, medical staff settings uh, becomes somebody on whom other. Uh, uh, medical specialists tend to rely as uh, an arbiter, uh, you know, when the surgeons and the, you know, when, when two different specialties are kind of having at it, the internists are in the middle. Um, so, so then why, why, why the Valley? I, I would state the following. We have 16, really 20 or 24 PG1 positions in internal medicine at UTRGV School of Medicine at DHR. We have another dozen positions at NAP. We have another 10 positions at Valley Baptist. We can do arithmetic. That's nearly as many positions as the entire class. So if you want to stress over where you're going to match, if you want to really just, just spend lots of money and time and, and, and a year of your life, you, you go right ahead. You, you go for it. But you know what? There's always room for you here. And if you rank us 100th, or if you rank us 50th, uh, you'll probably match somewhere. And that having been said, I always talk about uh, applications like a cappuccino. The top part is the stretch. Stretch for the fact that in our first year, our first graduating class of 39, 15 of them went into internal medicine, either as a PG-1 or as part of a combined program. The set last year, our second class had, had seven, and that's healthy. But after two years, we've had students go, go to Mass General. We've had students each year go to Vandy. We had a student go to the University of Washington. We've had students go to UT Houston. And you know what? We have students stay right here at UTRGV. I'm going to say something that might sound nihilistic, might sound odd, but I'm going to say it. For many patients, they don't know where you went to med school. They might not even be able to pick it out on a map. And a minute after you graduate, they don't care, they don't know, they just know you're the doctor. A minute after you finish residency, they don't know where or you're in fellowship, or they don't know where you train, they just know that they can be safe with you. And same with a minute after you finished fellowship. So the best residency in the world, what's the best residency in the world? Well, of course, it's based on these factors and this, uh, uh, blood and this, uh, the, no. The best residency in the world is the one you match at because that's where you plant and that's where you become community. And that's where you make the ties that last a lifetime, a professional generation that Dr. Fish can tell you about, that, that others can tell you about that uh, are truly the ties that bind. In your faculty here at UTRGV, many who either trained here or in, uh, in, 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 in legacy uh, institutions. 
So you have a choice of so many different things to learn in the transitional year uh, program. Maybe <laughs> I don't know if any of you are, came here for internal or are going to get swept away to transitional. Uh, that'd be interesting. Uh, but for those of you for here for internal, listen to the really deep roots that are, are in the Valley Baptist program and the kind of uh, X, Y, Z axes that you can go anywhere in the DHR and the, the NAP program, which is making a name for itself nationally for underserved border care, where I, I get people in, in everywhere from Mississippi to Minnesota saying, what's going on at NAP? So welcome to this, welcome to this session. This is, this is fun. Uh, medicine is fun. Medicine is a team sport and teams win games. But you can play quarter or middle and, and do a lot of neat things in internal medicine. For the transitional year, you'll learn. You're on your way to somewhere else. You're going to radiology or you're, you're going to ENT. You're, you're, and that's, that's wonderful. And we, we'll have a nice, fun year. But at the end of the day, remember UTRTV. But go for those stretch programs. Go for those programs that fit like a glove. And remember where you came from. So thank you. I'll take my leave. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dentino. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and kind of go through uh, several programs this evening and uh, give each of them about 20, 25 minutes. When we get close to the 25 minute, I'll kind of wave my hand and whoever's speaking hopefully will take note and adjust uh, your pace accordingly. We're going to start off with the transition program. We have Michael Rutko here. Michael, welcome. Good to see you again. Michael is a 2021 graduate of UTRGV School of Medicine. And a year from now, you'll be in Illinois, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Thank yes, you, Dr. Fish. You're on your way to PMNR residency. So tell us about where are you exactly and what is the transition year and how is that working for you? Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Fish. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces here. And good evening, everyone. Dr. Almeida, my program director, is also on the call. Uh, Welcome. Um, thank you. Yes. Say Hello, and then a PowerPoint that I can go over, if that's okay. Yes, you can share your screen. Okay, so let me just share the screen real quick. All right. Okay, everyone. Can everyone see that? It's Yes, we can see it. All right. So, yes. Um, give me one minute trying to find the... Uh, uh, what's the... Here we go. How do I start this? Okay, so play from the start. Okay. All right. So yes, um, I was one of the graduating uh, class of last year. I'm proud to still be here, part of the UTRGB system. Um, I'm originally from the Valley, if you guys don't know me. And it's been nice to, to have this transition, still be at home, and still be very familiar places where we've you know done rotations ourselves that we're, we're already accustomed to the faculty and the environment so it's 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 been really nice um after dr dentina's uh, introduction and description of internal medicine for those of you who decide not to go into internal medicine after that um you know there's options like transition year which are necessary for a lot of required programs and these are in case some of you guys don't know transition year is like another option um, in addition to prelim IM year, um, some programs require that. This is required that you have to submit a, a, an extra application on ERAS. You have to apply for TY in addition to whatever advanced program you need. So don't, don't forget about that. A lot of people my year with COVID did not do a lot of applications and, and they're very limited. So it's really important to, to know about it and to apply. And so um, let's go on. So what is it? Um, like I said, some, it's required by some advanced programs such as preventative medicine, anesthesiology, DR, IR, RADONC, DERM, PMNR, and surprisingly neuro, I, I learned that on the website today. So for those programs that are advanced, you know, you have to apply to either prelim year or a TY year. For those that are categorical, you don't need to worry about it. But if you're applying to both categorical and advanced, both categorical, excuse me? Um, 
I think the question was, what is categorical? Categorical is the pro you're, you're at the same institution for all three to four years or five years or six years, whatever your specialty is. Advanced program, the, the program doesn't have enough funding to have you for the whole time. So you, they require you to do your intern year somewhere else. And um, so these programs here, the ones described, um, I believe ophthalmology as well. I didn't include that, but that, that's also, or unless they change it this year. Um, it's a one-year program, so you're only here for from July to July. Um, the program here at UVU is, is uh, five years old. It's uh, established in 2018, and we're sponsored by the Internal Medicine Department at UTRGV, so we're very close. Um, we work very well. We go to all the didactics that they do. Um, we, you see the IM residents all the time. You're pretty much part of them as well. And surprisingly, there's not a lot of TY programs. So I didn't know this um, as well, but like prelim, you can do internal medicine almost anywhere. There's like hundreds of, of IM programs in the country. In Texas, a lot, of, a lot of IM programs for prelim year, but for TY, there's actually only eight in Texas. Here's a list of them here. You have one in Austin. We have us here, UTRGV. You have um, one in El Paso, two in El Paso one in Fort Worth, uh, two in Houston, and I guess Kingwood outside of Houston as well. So three in Houston. So, oh, I think, yeah, sorry, San Antonio as well. So aside from us, the next one closest to home for, for you, our GV people would be San Antonio and then in Fort Worth, Houston. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to really be closer to your family, to your, you know, um, et cetera. Uh, program leadership. Um, like I mentioned, Dr. Almeida is our program director. She's here on the call. We also have um, Bianca Rodriguez, our program coordinator, and Dr. Dentino is the chairman of all of IM, so he's, he's here as well. Uh, curriculum. So like I said, we're very similar to the IM program, but very different as well. So um, the differences are, are boldly in blue. Uh, we do do a lot of IM experiences. We're three months on wards. Um, we do one month in the in clinic. That's the outpatient clinic. For those of you who are, or all of you are students. Are, so whenever you do your outpatient um, IM rotation, you're at the clinic with, with Dr. Chang and Dr. Lopez and, and the other attendings there. Um, that We do a whole month there. Um, you also do one month of emergency medicine at DHR, surgery as well at DHR and then pediatric ICU. Some of us didn't even have a pediatric ICU experience, so to work for a whole month in it is, is very special. Um, then the difference really with TY is uh, the research and the elective months. And so this really gives us a lot of flexibility to work on extracurricular stuff, extra research that you're working on. You can, you can do projects throughout the year and then you have two whole blocks. You can do extra studying for step three during those research as well. And then really cool is the elective part. So for those of you going into, you know, all the aforementioned specialties, this is really kind of a, a good time to, to check out other parts of medicine that you may not get in the rest of your training. Um, or if you want extra, I guess, um, experience in certain things that, that you didn't get a lot of due to COVID, you know, this is your chance to kind of get that. In IM, you also get electives. So, so don't think you, you need to be TY to do electives. Um, but this slide, I'll just take a little more time on like TY is, is really special because of the transition. Um, you know, it's an easy transition into residency. It's a one year program. And also I think this, this slide kind of speaks for itself. Like you do get kind of a very diverse, ex, like, um, you know, selection of, of, um, of experiences. So for me, for myself, I'm going into rehab medicine. So I've already worked in pediatric ICU. I'm currently in ambulatory clinic. And just working in those in those limited just two blocks already, you can see where rehab kind of fits in with the ICU peds people, the patients, and in, in, in clinic, I, I'm seeing a lot of you know joint knee knee problems. So I I think it's really cool already to see how my rehab future can be in in this short amount of time. Um, Lastly, I kind of mentioned um, you do need to complete an application for it. Um, so do that specially on ERAS. Um, they're going to have, for example, if you're doing UTRGV, you're going to have to apply to the UTRGV TY in addition to UTRGV IM. 
in addition to the UTRGV prelim, you know, so those are all three, if, if, you're, if you're trying to, to go that route. So just make sure you know what you're applying to and that you, you send all the right applications. Um, in addition to the complete application, you need the Dean's letter, which you should be getting from Dr. Fish, and then three letters of recommendation, which I think that's pretty standard. Uh, where are we now? So we, we're kind of all over the place. We're five years old. So this is just a list of kind of where, where everyone's been. Mostly, you know, I mean, we have some neuroderm, a lot of radiologists, and, um, and then some PM&R, and, and we're all over the country. Does anyone have any questions? So, Michael, the transition program is really a launching pad into uh, advanced specialties. Back, back in the old days, they used to call this a rotating internship in some form or another. Um, and, uh, you know, for many physicians uh, entering many fields, uh, it was much broader back then. You know, the first year out of medical school was a year just like this with uh, rotations through a variety of, of specialties, uh, providing very broad experience. Uh, and of course, back in those days, interns were on call every other night and every other weekend. <laughs> it's a different, uh, different life. Uh, Dr. Almeida, we're pleased to have you here. Do you have some comments? Uh, other, other uh, I had some ideas questions, here? actually, if that's okay. Um, my name is David Ortiz. I'm a fourth year medical student. Um, yeah, you're right. If I, if I couldn't, okay. Um, you had mentioned the, that you do the UTRGVTY plus the IM for UTRGV and the prelim. Um, if a student were to just be interested in doing the transitional year, is that, is that not a thing? No, that's absolutely true. You can just apply TY, but, but like I so I didn't mention this actually, but there's only, I mentioned there's only eight programs in Texas. So like it's a little bit, and, and there's not that many spots. So you would do yourself a favor to just also apply for a prelim year. That's just my personal advice. I right, would say, right. you know, there's only four of us that get into the TY program. And I feel, I think all the TY programs in, in Texas are, are smaller than the internal medicine programs. I, I think, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know all the prelim programs in Texas, but I would, I think it's, there's just a more limited amount of, of programs, but yeah, you can absolutely. No, I know. was just asking because, you yeah. know, I went through clinicals and fell in love with each, each one. And like, you know, you, there, there wasn't almost, it was almost like there wasn't enough time to, you know, figure out which one you like, but Dr. Dentino definitely did a great job of <laughs> selling um, internal medicine, the whole yeah. fact that you can, yeah, you, oh, you're, yeah. you're yeah, you, saving you them. <laughs> But uh, also I had another one, the pediatric selective. Um, how do you feel you benefited from that? Because that's, that's a, you know, a population that I'm interested in kind of working with as well or being able to, um, what you kind of gain from that? Yeah, no, well, you're, you're lucky because Dr. Almeida is the, the pediatric ICU attending that you'll be working with when you, when you do it. So um, not only was that a plus that you actually get to work with your program director, director for like on one time but i feel that the pick you experience is kind of unique um where you're kind of um the sole resident on the whole floor so there's a lot of responsibility you know you get to kind of learn one-on-one -on -one with the attendings and for me i just like the patient population my my covid experience was very limited in peds uh, my peds experience was very limited with covid so I just even just working with the pediatric population, seeing a lot of, you know, the common things, but, but very seriously in the ICU. I thought that was, that was pretty cool. And then just your, your new role as a, um, yeah, just this your new person on the floor. Um, yeah. yeah, no offense to Dr. Almeida, but um, when I was at Driscoll at the PICU for a week, they were like, you're, you're just carrying out the, 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 uh, what is it intensivist um sort of plan do you do, did, do you feel like or did you feel like you had input into how to care for these patients that were like in critical condition um i mean maybe uh, dr almeida wants to elaborate on on that um hold on give me one second i, I just have some another very it's very specific yeah sorry again no, no, doc, dr almeida let's let's give you a chance here to uh, I, make some comments. Thank you for being here. 
Hi, everybody. Um, well, I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Rocco for taking the lead on this uh, residency fair. And um, for, to answer student Dr. Ortiz's questions. Um, so yes, so, so the transitional year can is available for uh, a, re, a prerequisite for certain programs like anesthesia, radiology, interventional, derm, um, neurology. Um, ophthalmology used to require a, um, a prelim year that could have been a transitional, but they've opted over, no pun intended, opted over to um, doing a combined program. So they, they're they integrated program. So ophthalmology is no longer requiring a transitional year, but transitional year is also available for true undecided um, candidates that they just want another year to figure out, um, do I want to do surgery? You know, I'm torn between internal medicine, pediatrics, or um, we, we used to have an OB required rotation. We are, we're going to make that an elective this, this coming up year. Um, but uh, so in my experience, um, you know, PICUs are, you know, in pediatric intensivists, we tend to be a little bit, um, let's see, I don't want to overgeneralize, but we do tend to be want to be in control. Um, and I know Dr. Mahar, um, who's the intensivist, uh, the medical director at Driscoll Children's, we work closely with them. Um, and um, I, you have, as, a, as an intern doing an ICU rotation, um, we always have to make sure um, you, you have to, we have to make sure you're um, comfortable with the patients and we don't want, um, I guess. Yeah, no, uh, I'm sure that they're, it's, it's a very <laughs> sensitive situation. I realized it when I asked it, it's, we're, it's our first year out. Um, it was yeah. a dumb question. My apologies. No, no, it's not a dumb question. Um, no, I, I, I've heard, I've heard the same lecture from Dr. Mahar, which is, um, unless, you know, you're, you're not writing any orders unless you pass them, you know, you, you go through me. Um, so I, I think that there's a gradient of uh, learning and responsibility and supervision. And, you know, I, I think everybody's a little bit different, but to answer your question a little bit. So uh, a little further, we round every morning and this, and this is the time when we collaboratively um, discuss every patient plan you know, and what we're gonna be doing. So you're very much involved with the decisions um, that are made for that patient. Um, so you may be carrying out some orders um, that the attending is asking for, but when, when we discuss every single patient, your input is very valuable. Um, and it's Dr. like a Rock learning experience almost like, a, like we're, you're, you're there to help us walk through these extreme scenarios. It just clicked right now. My so, <laughs> I get it. No, because yeah, when, when I was at Driscoll, they were teaching us how to gauge like the specific like um, peep and how to keep it at that specific level and why it's at that level for that patient. Um, so yes. I think even if you're not like the, the sole like, you know, maybe in wards or, you know, you actually do have a little more autonomy over like the plan of your patient. Maybe that's not the same in PICU or in ICU per se, but like, I think just, and maybe you don't want to do it was my first rotation going into, you know, residency. I'm like, is this baby having a stroke or is she, or is she, you know, so it's good that you have that, that direction there with you. Um, but it's just cool to learn like the, some of these scenarios, you know, in, as your new role. I, I don't thank think that was a bad question. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. We have a, another student from the first class, class of 2020, who uh, now has completed a transition year at John Peter Smith in Fort Worth. And she last month began a dermatology residency. Uh, so I, again, it was a, an, entry, an entry pathway into uh, an advanced uh, specialty. Any other questions or comments? Very good. All right. Dr. Almeida, Dr. Rocco, thank you both for being here with us. Uh, you'll leave us uh, some contact information, if you would, so that uh, if students have questions later on, they'll be able to contact you. 
Absolutely. I'll put it in the chat. Same. Thank you. All Thank right. You Excellent. Thank you both. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on then to hear about the internal medicine residency at, um, at DHR. And I believe we have Dr. Michelle Lopez with us, uh, Associate Program Director. Uh, I saw Dr. Uh, Roque Mifuji, who is a Chief Resident. And uh, I, oh, Evelyn Pena, uh, Program Coordinator. As I mentioned last time, folks, uh, Program Coordinators are the key person in each residency that you really need to get to know and love. Um, because in that person's hands is your life, your schedule, uh, your assignments, um, and uh, you know your passage through that residency program uh, will depend greatly upon the judgment and decisions of the program coordinator. Uh, so get to know that person and uh, and respect that person, uh, and be responsive when. Uh, the program coordinator calls you for information. Uh, in applying for residencies, you are likely going to interact with the program coordinator around such details as arranging interviews, uh, either whether they're virtual or, or probably virtual this year, uh, or other matters pertaining to the residency. So uh, welcome, welcome everybody. Who would like to go ahead and start? I can start. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Lopez. I'm the Associate Program Director at the DHR Program for Internal Medicine. <clears throat> I don't have a presentation for you guys, uh, but basically we, we're a three-year program and uh, we follow a four plus one schedule. Some of you, you may have already rotated with, with us um, during your internal medicine rotation. And if you haven't, I mean, we follow the, the four plus one schedule. So we have clinic every fifth week. In between, we uh, offer electives or some of the core rotations, <clears throat> and uh, and yeah, our residents uh, rotate through the ICU. Uh, all the core rotations include GI, endocrine, nephrology, cardiology, neurology, um, emergency medicine, um, hemonc, uh, geriatrics, or palliative care, and. Uh, we also have additional electives, including um, like an airway elective for those who want to practice intubations, procedure elective if they want to get some more hands-on experience doing procedures. I offer a point of care ultrasound elective, which is also offered for, for some of the medical students So you may have already uh, done that or maybe you're planning to, but we also do that for our residents. <clears throat> we have research electives for those who are participating in research ophthalmology, sports medicine, there's, um, you know, a lot of different options. Um, our residents all participate in scholarly activities. So it's part of the ACGME requirements that you do so. And um, we, we have a quality improvement um, project that's expected of you guys uh, every year. So as during your clinic, um, with you, you will work with your clinic group and you will work on a, on a project throughout the year. Um, what else? You guys rotate through the ICU. And, um, and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. I will open up to see if anybody has any specific questions about um, internal medicine. Dr. Zantino did a great job <laughs> describing what internal medicine is. And, you know, um, I agree with all of that. And if you guys already have an interest in, in internal medicine and you're considering our program, you know, feel free to ask us uh, any questions. Dr. Dentino, um, <clears throat> I think he asked in the chat about the Hope Clinic. Um, so yes, that is an experience that our residents get to participate in during their clinic week. And um, it's basically a, a clinic that offers uh, uh, medical care to patients who maybe don't have insurance or are not able to pay for it. And maybe our chiefs who are here can, can maybe give you a little bit more uh, talk about that experience. I know they all really enjoy it and they, it's been a really uh, rewarding experience. <clears throat> yes, you have, uh, I believe, two chief residents here with you, Dr. Theory, right? Welcome. Yes, sir, we're here. Yes, and Dr. Fuji. So, yes, welcome, both of you. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to share a presentation with you guys. Thank you, Dr. Lopez. Uh, and I'm going to touch a little bit more on, on what Dr. Lopez just uh, shared with us. So let me share my screen uh, really quickly. 
and uh, be around here. It should work. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, can you yes. all now we can see it? Yes. So it's just a couple of slides, uh, and like Dr. Lopez was mentioning, this is, uh, and also as Dr. Dentino uh, initially uh, told us about uh, internal medicine. Uh, to me, it's it's a beauty of a program, like knowing, uh, diagnosing, uh, curing people, knowing how disease uh, affects everyone, understanding the disease. Uh, to me, it's one of the, it's it's an amazing, it's an amazing specialty. And, and I'm truly in love with this residency program. So uh, one of the main things that I would like to start about uh, UTRGV-DHR is uh, one of the most important benefits is uh, DHR, uh, which uh, as most of you know, uh, the hospital is located near the Edinburgh area. Uh, it's a huge hospital. And um, this is just like a scheme of I'm a, a small map of how DHR is like from, from above and a little bit from the side. Uh, but one of the be, uh, best advantages of this hospital is also that uh, it's, it's also a comprehensive a stroke center. Uh, it's also one of the uh, biggest centers for STEMIs and PCI uh, in the area in the valley. And you get a lot of experience uh, in terms of uh, strokes instead of, of STEMIs, MIs, and also this is a level one trauma center uh, as of recently. So you really have uh, a diverse set of population and a diverse set of, of things that you can see on a daily basis in, in this hospital. So talking about a little bit uh, in terms of leadership, Give me one second. Okay, so uh, we have, as you know, all know Dr. Andrew Dentino as a as a chairman of internal medicine. Uh, Dr. Brandon Cantasaro, who is currently our program director and is an amazing physician. Dr. Chelsea Chang and Dr. Lopez, who recently just recently. Oh, sorry, did it kick you out of the presentation? Uh, give me. Yeah, it's not in full screen anymore. Okay, give me one second. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so let me go back into it. Okay, yes, uh, sorry. So uh, Dr. Lopez and Dr. Chang, uh, as assistant program director, Dr. Gutierrez, Dr. Varghese, also part of the faculty. And we have more faculty, incoming faculty. Uh, some of them are previous residents, which is also one of the things that I consider very strong of our program that we have, uh, that we keep uh, some of our residents uh, graduates from the program. And of course we have uh, Evelyn, our program coordinator, an amazing human being, an amazing person that is always supporting us and always looking uh, after us in the program. And honestly, uh, I don't think the program would be the same without her. So thank you very much, Evelyn, if you're around there. So yeah, like I mentioned, so uh, DHR is a level one trauma center, uh, Joint Commission 35 Comprehensive Stroke Center. And uh, also in terms of talking about benefits, one of the also greatest benefits of this program is the in-house fellowships that we have. And uh, as of now, we have the nephrology fellowships, uh, cardiology, gastroenterology, palliative care, and recently endocrinology also is going to start uh, here at uh, DHR. Uh, the most experience that you will get uh, during your internal medicine residency or the ones that you are closer to would be nephrocardio and gastroenterology. And actually, when you are in these rotations inside the hospital, you work hand in hand, side by side with them, and they are an amazing resource, an amazing source of knowledge uh, and overall, it's it's a very rewarding experience. Dr. Theory is here. I'm pretty sure he can agree with me uh, that the fellows are are amazing, and they are always there to help you and also to teach you. So you have not only the attendings that are there to teach you, also you have fellows for for different uh, specialties. Uh, palliative care is extremely important as well, and you'll you'll find out eventually that. Uh, their role in the care of patients is, is fundamental. Uh, nephrology, 
like I mentioned, we have a multiple in-house fellowship that I do believe it's it's a great benefit and it's a great um, advantage to our program overall. So in terms of some statistics about uh, UTRGB DHR, our class size uh, on average is around 16 residents per year. Uh, at least on, on, on the previous generation that they just graduated um, on 2020, the board passing rate was around 100%. Uh, the fellowship acceptance rate out of the five that applied, five got accepted into different fellowships. Uh, ID, a GI, uh, among some of them. Uh, the resident retention to faculty on average is around two residents that uh, stay from generations. I believe we have uh, Dr. Bello, Dr. Arboleda working over there at NAP. We have, over here we have Dr. Daniel Hernandez and Dr. Andres Suarez that stayed with us in DHR. Uh, we have uh, another uh, Dr. Solomon that will join us eventually over here. So uh, it's, uh, I'm, personally, I'm, I'm applying to stay as faculty the next year in the program. So we have a, a good resident retention to as faculty here in the program, which uh, to me, it really leads uh, and points to uh, how happy the residents are uh, with the program and uh, their willingness to stay and help the program grow further. Uh, in terms of diversity, we have residents from all over the world, basically, and we are representing at least 20 countries uh, within amongst all the residents that currently are in internal medicine. So uh, I'm gonna talk briefly about the inpatient experience uh, versus outpatient experience. Uh, the inpatient experience, we have uh, what it is wards, which is your overall uh, inpatient rotation where you are taking care of the patients. You have your teams that are formed by one senior, two interns, and you take care of a certain uh, amount of patients. This and in here in this rotation is will, where you will learn your core uh, of how to treat patients, how to handle patients inside the hospital. And uh, also you will get a uh, vast amount of knowledge uh, with rounds and learn the responsibility of taking care of patients and also the gratification of being able to discharge uh, patients once, they, once you uh, are able to heal them uh, or cure the reason why they were admitted initially. You also get the, the ICU experience with SIDS uh, it's challenging day by day, uh, but it really forms you as a physician. Uh, you also have your ED experience, uh, multiple subspecialty rotations, cardio, nephro, GI, palliative, pulmonary, ID, room, endocrinology. Uh, you have all the set of, of tools and all the set of uh, subspecialty that you will go through all of them in order to learn as much as you can about everything. Because as Dr. Gatino mentioned, it's it's the nature of medicine, internal medicine, learning how, um, how diseases happen and knowing how to treat them. We also have night float, which can be either wards or ICU. Uh, so that way we don't need to stay like in a 24 hour call. We have different teams at night and throughout, uh, at night and throughout the day. In terms of outpatient experience, uh, we have a bunch of outpatient experience as well. Uh, the most important one being the outpatient GME internal medicine clinic. Uh, we usually are there uh, one week every fifth week, every five weeks. So that gives you a vast amount of opportunity to uh, engage with patients in the outpatient setting. Uh, also learn how to treat patients, how to follow up, uh, follow up post-hospital admissions. Uh, we also have the privilege to uh, go to other clinics like cardiology, the chest, pulmonary, sleep clinic, nephro, hemonc, endocrinology, GI, rheumatology, and of course the hope clinic, uh, like Dr. Lopez was uh, talking about briefly, where we serve uh, over there, we treat underserved patients or uninsured patients. Uh, overall, it's a great experience uh, outpatient wise, and it's a great opportunity for everyone to learn uh, a different kind of medicine, I would say, but it's also structural and like, um, an integral part of the medicine as well. And in terms of COVID-19 contributions, 
um, it, especially during the pandemic, the first or the first peak, I would say around July last year, uh, we're working uh, inside the SIDU2, one of the COVID units inside DHR. Uh, we were taking care of the COVID initially of the whole COVID unit. Um, we didn't have like much of a cap over there, but uh, we had a big team of residents uh, fully geared and just ready to help all the patients that were in need back then. Um, uh, also, uh, in the latter part, once the vaccines arrived, we were also volunteering uh, in the UTRGB to vaccinate all people. I actually have a couple of pictures uh, that this is basically our teams that were uh, deployed and distributed inside the hospital in the DHR uh, COVID unit in the SIDU2 and also one of our esteemed colleagues, recent graduate, um, Dr. Blanco, who's right there uh, giving uh, one of the COVID vaccine shots to one of the patients. Overall, uh, an extremely gratif gratifying experience. And uh, honestly, it was, it was a pleasure and honor being able to help all these people uh, back then. Uh, in terms of wellness activities, there's a bunch in here. Uh, we are just one big family, and I'm pretty sure Dr. Thierry agrees with that, and anyone in the program that you talk to or ever encounter. We're just one big family. Uh, well-being activities inside the program we've done, uh, like painting, and like we can see like on the top left corner, like we've done this type of activities inside, uh, like wellness activities distributed throughout throughout the months. Uh, we have one over here where we were like dressing uh, people to see who was the most creative one. You can see Dr. Gutierrez over there in the right upper corner. Uh, so a lot, a lot of fun stuff. Dr. Lora, who you will come to uh, meet someday, like he got one of the uh, Rosca de Reyes uh, gifts there over there. So it's it's a really fun environment, really friendly. Uh, environment with all the residents and we are always there to support each other and I think that's one of the biggest benefits of our program we're very close and we are always there for each other uh, a lot of other things like what to do for fun in the in here overall in the valley uh, we do multiple things we have a lot of bakers we're always like baking cheesecakes uh, cupcakes cooking uh, we go play basketball, we go, we go play tennis, um, basically just trying to live our lives to the best, enjoying residency, enjoying life while also uh, helping people. Uh, overall, uh, to me, it's been a pleasure working in this program and, and to all the people that I've worked with, it's been a, a true pleasure working with them and I consider them uh, part of my family. Uh, more pictures around here, uh, different, we've been to different conferences. I believe this one's from South Texas ACP. Here we have Dr. Suri teaching us about wellness, meditation, yoga. Uh, here we have like around Christmas cooking, um, multiple, multiple pictures just kind of to give you an idea of what it means to be part of the UTRGB DHR family. And I think that's uh, that's pretty much from our standpoint. I don't know if you or any of you have any questions from our program. Thank you. Dr. Theory, did you like to add anything to that? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think uh, Dr. Mifuji did a great job uh, going over um, all the highlights of the program. Some of the things that I really wanna stress that, that makes this program, I think, uh, not only a very strong program, but but a great place to grow and learn is uh, one, the four plus one system. I can't stress enough how important that is. It gives you less breaks um, in your training as you're going along. Having a full week of clinic every fifth week really allows you to be in an outpatient mindset while you're, while you're taking care of those patients. And it allows for there to be less interruptions while you're inpatient and having to leave in the middle of the day to go to the clinic. Um, it also guarantees you a golden weekend every fifth weekend. So you're always able to have that full weekend free, which is amazing. Um, I also uh, really, really like the fact that 
uh, not only are we getting more fellowships, but that we're really involved with the fellowships that we have here. Uh, like uh, Dr. Mifuji said, we work really close with cardiology, with nephrology and GI. Um, we round with the fellows and we round with the attendings, uh, do presentations with them. And it goes to show um, how good those programs are that we, uh, we, we retain residents within the fellowships and, and people apply broadly. In my class alone, I think there's uh, 11 of us applying for fellowship. Uh, including uh, two for nephrology, me and, and Dr. Satya Raj, which is awesome, I think. And it's directly because of the nephrology fellowship here and the nephrology group uh, here. And then the program support, uh, there's new things added to the curriculum. Like someone just mentioned POCUS. It's something that's becoming super relevant in your day-to-day -day practice and being able to have a specific rotation to learn how to properly uh, perform a POCUS exam and how to use it in your practice, whether you go uh, outpatient, uh, become a hospitalist or a fellow. Um, it's getting a head start on, on the new, as I've heard it called, the new stethoscope, so to speak. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of wonderful opportunities here. And that's not even to include the fact like Dr. Mufuji said, we're, we're, we're our family here. Uh, I think all of us are extremely approachable. We all love to teach and learn. And it just, it's a great environment to be around. I, I can't recommend it enough. Thank you, Dr. Theory. And Dr. Khan, you've joined us, uh, another uh, chief resident uh, from the program. So would you like to say a few words? Yes, hi, thank you. Um, no, I think uh, Dr. Theory and Dr. Mufuji pretty much summed it all for us. Um, what I would like to say is that if you do consider to stay in the Valley or with like D with our program, like UDRGV, we're all like Dr. Dendino likes to say, we may be different programs, but at the end of the day, we're all one big family. Um, so like Dr. Heath's here, when we were doing COVID, it was literally all under Dr. Heath's um, wing and his leadership. Um, I call him a superhero because he would do days rounds with us and then he would do nights at nap and I do not know how <laughs> but he, would, he would do it and that's the quality of leadership you see and that's what you aspire to be when you grow up right um so he, it was under his guidance that we learned so much um and then say you stay here even though you think oh you're in the valley will I get to train um, and get the training that somebody else would get at another program, definitely yes, because our uh, fellow, like our graduates have mastered really big and good programs. One of our graduates is at doing rheumatology at Yale. Another one last year matched at Cleveland Clinic for Palliative. Last year we had one fellow, one graduate match at Baylor at Nephrology. Another one is ID critical care at Allegheny. Um, another one is doing endocrinology. And we also retain inpatient, um, like in-house, um, like one of our previous chiefs is now a GI fellow. So we do match at competitive fellowships and it's because of the quality of training that we receive and the quality of letters that we receive. Um, so I think that makes us a, a good match, even if we come from um, close to the border, like from the Valley, we still compete with students from and graduates from all across the country. So that would be something I would say it's a good point to consider. But yes, we, yes you guys thank you. Questions? Thank you. Dr. Lopez, let me pose a question to you and I'll pose this question to the other program directors who are here. I believe in internal medicine, some programs may be asking students to complete a supplemental application. And also some programs might be using a structured evaluate or, or calling for a structured evaluation letter. Can you discuss those? Uh, will, will your program at DHR be using these? And, and also maybe could you just briefly explain uh, you know, what they are? Sure, Dr. Fish. Um, so we recently had a meeting with all of the um, the clerkship directors from all over the U.S. with uh, the AIM, the Alliance of Internal Medicine, and uh, <clears throat> they they talked about these new structured letters. And I think a lot of programs are kind of trying to figure out <laughs> if they're gonna, you know, what they're gonna do because it's a relatively new thing. And 
In terms of the supplemental questions, we will not be doing that this year. Um, we, we, we just, we didn't uh, sign up for it on time, to be honest. And, uh, but I, I don't know if all the programs are, I know I asked him a student the other day and she said about 50% of the programs that she was looking at were requesting this. Uh, but us, we won't be, I, I don't know about, uh, you know, NAP or Valley Baptist, but we won't be doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From what I can understand, uh, and, and uh, I'm not, I'm not an intern, so I'm not into in the club, but what I, what I see from the AAMC communications is the questions being posed in the supplemental application are also very much likely the questions that might come up in an interview. Uh, that uh, as program directors and faculty meet with students, you may be asking the same kinds of questions of the students regarding their background, their interests, what you know, special skills or capabilities they bring to the residency program. Uh, it seems to be something along those lines. Is that your understanding? Yes, that's correct. I, I know even one program said that they were gonna have uh, students pre-record their like videos before an interview day. This is not for the application, but for in interviews, even pre-recording some, some questions, some interview questions mm -hmm. um, so that the day of the interview, it's a little bit more relaxed. Um, but, but yeah, I think the supplemental questions um, are like what you mentioned um, like similar to interviews. I don't know if they're videos or not, to be honest, I, I think it's a pretty new thing, and I, I, I don't know yeah. exactly what programs will be asking or, or, or requesting. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. students, and I think, yeah, this is, as, as Dr. Lopez just mentioned, this is something new. Some programs may use these instruments, some may not. You know, stay tuned as you compile your list of programs to apply to and make those applications. You'll get information back from those programs uh, if they want you to uh, do these uh, these additional uh, tasks. So you know, how, don't how sweat much about does it. the lighting don't worry make about difference? It. Excuse me, David. Excuse me, David. No, yeah, don't okay. sweat about it. You know, don't don't okay, worry the about the quality it. of the images. What I was worried about if they were going to record require a uh, video recording. Yeah, we will provide for interviews, uh, which are going to be virtual this year. Uh, if you are concerned about that, whether you're set up at home uh, will be uh, adequate to the task. Uh, we will make uh, spaces uh, here in school, workspaces or office spaces available, you know, on a kind of reservation basis so that you can schedule, you know, use of these spaces to have secure uh, internet connection, you know, neutral backgrounds, proper equipment. So we'll, we'll, we'll line that up uh, as we go forward. Yeah. Do, do, Dr. Fish, may, yes, may sir. I respond? Good to see you, Dr. Heath. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, sir. Good to see you. I'm glad to see you. All, all lots of familiar faces uh, as well. Um, in, in terms of the quality of video, we, we did 150 uh, virtual interviews uh, last year. I, I can't think of a one that the, the, the quality of video was not sufficient to ha have a good conversation and, and to, to actually see the applicant's uh, face. Uh, so I, I, I think generally speaking, I, th I think that shouldn't worry you too much. Um, and just to talk about the the supplemental, I, I at, at this point, I, I don't see NAP. And I guess if the deadline's gone, <laughs> we're, we're SOL, <laughs> as they say. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for uh, our, our program representatives from DHR? And you'll leave us some contact information, Dr. Lopez and, and uh, others, so that uh, if students think of something later on, they'll be able to uh, contact you, okay? And, and, and he meant SOL south of Laredo. <laughs> That's a valley thing, yes. Okay, thank you all very much for coming from DHR this evening. So uh, once again, your program is actually a relatively large program, 16 residents at each of three years. 
plus plus and the fellows in the fellowship program. So yeah. And that's this is now five years that you've all been operating. Relatively new, but not brand new. Yes, correct. In fact, um, when I, I started, I joined the team around two years ago, going on three. And uh, I knew it was a relatively new program when I came. And so I was very surprised when I when I came to work here. It didn't feel like a brand new program. We have every really good structure. Um, we have a really great team of faculty and our residents do quite a lot. So even though it is relatively new, I think we're, we, we we're pretty uh, established and we have a really good foundation. Thanks in part a lot to Dr. Heath, who was our previous program mm -hmm. director. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to go ahead and shift gears and move on to hearing about the Internal Medicine Program Residency Program at NAP. And uh, welcome again, Dr. Heath, Program Director. I see we have Dr. Jafari uh, with us, uh, one of your chief residents. And is anyone else here from your program, Dr. Heath? Yes, I'm here, Fatima Bello. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, very good. Dr. Heath, go ahead, please. Well, um... Uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk talk to you all a little bit. Um, before I, I talk uh, at least a little, or, or let Dr. Bella and Dr. Uh, Jafari talk a little bit more about the specifics, let me just talk a little bit more about internal medicine in general. Um, I, as Dr. Dentino mentioned, uh, internal medicine is fun. Um, it is a joy and it is a uh, blessing uh, to be able to care for patients uh, throughout their um, illness from, from the emergency department, through the hospital, through the ICU, uh, through the nursing home, through the rehab, and then to um, uh, the clinic. Um, so you get to see patients uh, throughout their um, uh, illness and, and you develop a relationship. And there is nothing in my mind it, more satisfying uh, in, in medicine than, than the physician-patient relationship. And um, I, I not, not that other uh, pediatrics has the same other uh, uh, other uh, subspecialties have the same, but uh, to me it just takes on a special meaning uh, because uh, when a lot of care is completed, uh, patients still come back to us to to keep things going, and that's to me the real um, specialness uh, to internal medicine. Um, and so I think we have some, some video or presentation, Dr. Bello, is that correct? You're muted, Dr. Bello. Dr. Jafari is going to go ahead now. Okay, yes, we can see that. Okay, great. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Shadi Jafari. I am one of the PGY2s and one of the co-chief residents here at UTRGV NAP Internal Medicine. Um, thank you, us, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Hopefully, we are really excited to share some information with you about UTRGV Internal Medicine Residency at NAP Medical Center. Um, 
We are located here in Westlaco, Texas. Uh, we are 20 to 30 minutes away from McAllen, Edinburgh, and Harlingen. Um, because of our geographical area and our patient population, um, everyone gets to see. There's ample opportunity to see and learn so much in medicine every day uh, during these three years. We are a 233-bed hospital, but again, just because of our, based on our uh, patient population, uh, we do see a lot of interesting cases every day. Uh, we are one of the 12 residency programs at UTRGV School of Medicine, one of the three internal medicine residents. We got accredited last year in April, and our first class of interns started uh, their residency last year in July. We have 12 uh, residents for each class. Uh, however, currently we have two PGY3 residents, 12 PGY2 residents, and 12 PGY1 residents that join us this year. Our program leadership, uh, our program director, Dr. Timothy Heath, our associate program director is Dr. Fatima Bello, and our program coordinator is Ms. Christina Cantu. We are very, very grateful for them. We are a new program. However, they have been working really hard over the past year. Uh, considering we were in a COVID pandemic, we are a new program, but they really worked hard. Um, they're trying to make us the best that we can be. Um, we're progressing every day, making improvement every day, and we're really grateful. And we're really thanking that Dr. Heath um, joined us here and he's our program director. We have five core faculties. Uh, two of which are from uh, from our sister hospital at DHR. They're medical. Uh, they're graduates from the internal medicine residency at DHR. We also have six clinical faculties. Four of them are uh, fellows from UTRGB fellowship programs, which again it gives us uh, such a great uh, perspective. Uh, there are uh, gastroenterology fellows and nephrology fellows. It's just really um, great uh, learning experience for us to be able to run with them and basically uh, learn from them. So uh, as it was mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, uh, UTRGV School of Medicine and the GME, they have cardiology, endocrinology, gastroenterology, hospice and palliative nephrology and sports medicine. So for those people who are interested in pursuing subspecialties or fellowships, this is absolutely um, a great opportunity. We do have residents in our program who are interested in pursuing fellowships. So um, I think that's always something important to consider whenever applying for a residency program. Our program mission is to train physicians of diverse experiences and talents to become agents of change, enabling our graduates to transform their communities by providing compassionate, comprehensive, evidence-based care for patients of all needs and backgrounds in Rio Grande Valley and beyond. And honestly, we have experienced this during the past year, during the COVID pandemic, uh, everybody has done their best uh, from faculty, resident, hospital staff, everyone has done great. And we have learned true evidence-based medicine as well as comprehensive and compassionate care during this past year. Um, the goal of our program is to individualize balance of clinical autonomy and the structural learning for each resident. Uh, we, do, um, we do go over evidence-based medicine every day. However, our residents, they get enough clinical autonomy to make uh, decisions regarding their uh, patients and then patient care management uh, and plan. We also want to promote development of academic medicine within the community. Uh, we try to support, guide, and educate residents to provide ethical and patient-centered care while they fulfill their uh, obliga clinical and professional obligations. We want residents to become lifelong learners. This is medicine. It's a lifelong journey in learning. So we really try every day um, to make it interesting and just encourage everybody to learn as we go along. And we also want everybody to, we encourage everybody to be actively engaged within the community that we serve. Here in this slide, we have an overview of our schedule. Uh, we here we have uh, rotations from two weeks to four weeks. We cover wards A, wards B. We have different team on each wards. We have ICU. Uh, our ICU rotation is one of our great rotations. We are learning from the best pulmonologists and intensivists here at Nam Medical Center. Uh, such great opportunity. Uh, we do have. Uh, night float and float nights, uh, as well as we have outpatient uh, rotations and electives. These are done both at NAM Medical Center and at other hospitals, including Valley Baptist, Harlingen Medical Center, and uh, McAllen Medical Center, depending on which rotation and which 
uh, physician uh, we are rotating with. Our elective rotations include cardiology, nephrology, GI, uh, endocrine, hematology, oncology, infectious disease. However, for those who are interested in uh, other subspecialties or areas, uh, that definitely can be arranged. It's just a matter of knowing uh, what person or which resident is interested in what uh, basically subspecialty and the program tries to arrange it for them. Again, here uh, we um, try to have dedicated time for our lectures and didactics. Here is just an overview, is a sample uh, schedule of a monthly schedule of our lectures. Um, we have board reviews. Uh, we have nephrology lecture, endocrinology lectures, radiology, pathology, and we have journal clubs. And uh, we do join the GME grand rounds on Fridays, which are usually happening through uh, Zoom lectures. Um, so. Uh, we, we do have board reviews, so this is basically an overview of what happens. Obviously, the schedule varies from month to month, week to week, depending on how everything is going, also during COVID times, but uh, we try to have dedicated time to our lectures, which are happening during noons, and great opportunity for everyone to basically go over guidelines, protocol, and basically discuss the current uh, assessment and management for patient care. Our educational activities uh, include morning reports and noon reports. Morning reports, again, every morning we discuss cases, um, for example, uh, cases that we saw overnight. Uh, again, we go over evidence-based medicine, current guidelines in terms of uh, diagnosing, assessing, managing plan. Uh, we do have our noon reports, which I just mentioned. Those are the noon lectures that we have. We have resident boot camp. This happens during month of July. This is basically to cover uh, fundamentals of internal medicine. Uh, we did that this year for our interns and we got really good feedback. Um, it was really helpful to them to just get a start about just the basics and uh, fundamental of internal medicine so they can develop more based on what they learn. Um, our other educational activities include airway training classes. This is usually done by the um, anesthesiology department here at NAP as well as the CRNAs, they're really a great resource for us to get introduction to airway management and intubation. Uh, and it has been really helpful. They're very open uh, to us to basically teach us in airway management and intubation. And we're really grateful for that. We also have focus training classes. Um, the picture here on the top on the um, left hand side, it's uh, one of the focus training classes. We do have a bedside ultrasound available to us here at NAP uh, if needed. However, we do also have Butterflies available, which are really great tools to just have ready in hand whenever um, needed for patient care and management, and just a great opportunity to learn how to work with ultrasound. Our other educational activities are our scholarly activities, like journal club, morbidity and mortality cases. Uh, as well as re resident run lectures. We have nephrology case series, uh, which uh, residents get to pick interesting cases in nephrology that they had. Um, during these series, we have nephrologists presenting these lectures. They help us to go over the details and anything important um, in terms of learning point of view, uh, which has been really um, grateful, very great in terms of uh, our learning. And we do have Ask a Radiology series again, uh, in these uh, series, residents go over interesting imaging they have um, come across during their patient care. We have a radiologist present and they basically help us how to read MRI, CT scans, x-rays, which is absolutely a great tool to have as an internist. Um, our, in general, our program here at NAB Medical Center Internal Medicine we are really involved in community outreach. We, we love that and we try to do it uh, as often and as much as we can. Uh, we have had um, done, we have had done lectures uh, in West Laco Regional Rehabilitation Hospital, which is right across NAB Medical Center. We have had lectures at West Laco Rotary Club and West Laco Library. These are lectures uh, done by residents uh, to the community. Uh, we have had great feedback uh, from the community for these lectures. And uh, basically these are again, are a great opportunity for residents to just practice teaching, educating the community. And for those who are trying to pursue academic medicine, these, these are just uh, great um, steps to, 
towards that and just in terms of educating um, the community and um, other professional healthcare professionals. And these are all the pictures, um, some of the pictures we had your, um, that we had during these presentations. Some of the benefits of our program, we here at NAB Medical Center, I know some people might be interested in these. Um, we do have a daily allowance of $10 for a meal here at the hospital. And the uh, rest of these points are shared among all the UTRGV GME residency programs. We have a $500 educational allowance for textbooks, um, question banks, et cetera. We have a $750 uh, travel allowance uh, for conferences, meetings, and uh, step three, if uh, taken and passed during the first year is also reimbursed. And again, this is all shared within the resident UTRGV GME residency programs. Um, our UT Health Internal Medicine Outpatient Clinic, this clinic is right outside of NAB Medical Center. It's actually a building attached to NAB Medical Center. Um, here we're trying to promote continuity of care. Uh, we do have a great uh, a majority of our patient population that we see at the hospital, they do not have primary care. They do not have um, access to primary care. So uh, what we're trying to do is to build uh, that relationship with them and to have continuity of care. So we refer uh, patients to our clinic in that way we can conduct built on and uh, basically go from um, provide them with the continuity of care that they need coming from hospital or a hospital discharge. Um, and we are, even though we are a new program, we are like working on our patient population and to promote our clinic. And um, so far we do have a, a good turnout of the people that we discharge from hospital who need primary care doctor. We see a lot of them coming back to us. And so that's also something that we are working on as a program. Our experience during COVID-19, uh, all our faculty and residents have been involved in the care of COVID patients since we started last year. Uh, residents have volunteered to work in the COVID unit, COVID ICU, um, and we have also spent time educating the community. Uh, uh, some of the lectures that we did for our community was about COVID, the effects of COVID, the consequences of COVID and et cetera. Um, residents have also been involved in vaccinating the community. We started uh, getting involved in the initial phase uh, that started happening during, uh, I think, February. We started um, helping with vaccination. We also continue to vaccinate uh, community in our outpatient clinic. Uh, we are actually very proud of program, uh, all its members, uh, for all, all they've done for um, the COVID patients, for the community over the past year, and we still continue to do so to this day. Um, just a little bit about wellness and life-work balance and what we do here at NAM Medical Center. Uh, as you can see, birthdays are very important to us. Uh, we celebrate birthdays, all birthdays. This is like an opportunity for all of us to come together, just share some time, quality time together, just relax, take a break from the clinical duties. And, um, you know, we, we don't miss any birthdays. Um, we're really proud of that. We also try to do some activities outside, uh, outside of the hospital, residents come together. Uh, we do actually have this ping pong table here in uh, internal medicine corner, which is a really a great measure for us to take a break and just unwind and just relax before we go back to work or before we go home. Uh, we do go to play tennis, um, play basketball, other sports, uh, play top golf, and just in general to get together. Um, these are some of other pictures. As soon as we got vaccinated, uh, we took advantage of that. And, you know, we, we tried to um, have more plans and, you know, just be there for each other and spend more time together, more quality time together that is outside of the hospital and outside of the, basically the clinical and professional duties. Um, some, another other things to consider, um, I know, um, Life, work, life and work balance is very important. So we are one hour drive from South Padre Island here uh, in Westlaco. Uh, again, uh, it's a great place to go for a day off. Um, there are outdoor concerts, there are fireworks, um, they are uh, water activities, windsurfing, kiteboarding, and then there is like nature centers. So um, it, that's a very good resource um, to just take a break and then go relax and then basically come back to work all fresh. 
Um, we are 20 minutes from McAllen. Um, again, um, there's a lot of opportunities to do extra activities here in McAllen, shopping, restaurants, hiking places that are available. Um, and so uh, once we uh, once we get the opportunity, there are ample like ample places to go and you know just uh, relax and try to ha maintain that work life balance, which to us is very important going through residency. Um, for applications, uh, like uh, most of the other residency programs, our applications are done through ERAS. Um, again, it's the same checklist for every other um, residency programs, the transcript, Dean's letter, three letters of recommendation, the personal statement, CV, the USMLE or complex scores, and if uh, for those who are in need of J-1 visa, uh, the valid EC ECG ECFMG certificate. So I think at the end, the question, why us? Why UTRGV internal medicine at NAP? Um, here we are family, we're really proud of that. Uh, we are a new program. So I think that kind of made us to be even more closer because everything was new. Uh, we were a, a new group of people. We came together, we support each other every day throughout this journey. Um, aside from that, we do have a really supportive and friendly environment here at NAP Medical Center in general. Uh, all the staff, um, all the members are really helpful, friendly. They have uh, tried to provide us a very good environment to work in. Um, again, just because of where we are located in our patient population, a wonderful opportunity to learn and to become an excellent physician. We see so many diverse and interesting cases every day. Uh, we have a lot of hands-on experience. Our uh, residents are involved in procedures since the first day. Um, a lot of them become certified even during the first year, some in the second year for these procedures. Um, again, we have opportunities to practice teachings. We have resident-run lectures in the hospital, and then we do have the community outreach uh, where we give lectures to the community, either at different hospitals at, or different locations. Um, we, we have the opportunity here in Westlaco to help a patient population that are in absolutely high needs of healthcare. That in itself is very uh, rewarding. And I think that's something that most physicians or all, would say all physicians are look forward to. Here we have an actual opportunity to make a difference for the community uh, we are serving. And again, as it was uh, mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, there is opportunities after graduations if uh, people want to join to become attendings or uh, academic positions as part of UTRGV, uh, that is always an option. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. If you have any questions, if anybody has any question, we'll be more than happy to answer the questions. Thank you, Dr. Jafari, very much. Thank you. Dr. Bello, would you like to add any other comments, any thoughts to that? Sounds like a great opportunity to learn and serve. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Jafari. Um, and yes, I agree with everything she said. Um, I'm actually a graduate of the DHR program. I was very fortunate to have had this opportunity to come over when NAP was studying. Um, again, I always reflect and I look back at the time I came to um, interview for the DHR program. Um, at that time, it was a relatively new program. It was just, we're just going to be the third class. And um, I made the decision to come here. I never regretted it. And I feel like looking back at NAP2, it's the same position. Because um, I know sometimes you, you know, you were like, oh, why a new program? Um, but it started. Um, we've made like giant strides. I'm very proud of the residents. I'm very proud of the work they've done. And um, we've gotten like very good feedback from the residents as well. It's a very good place to learn. Um, again, we are very family oriented. I know Dr. Jafari said that like 10 times, um, but we do not take that for granted at all. Um, we know now wellness is like one of the key things, SCGME. Um, it's one of the key thematic um, focus areas for um, SCGME. And um, we take it very seriously. We celebrate each other. Every little win we try to celebrate. Um, we come together, we bind together, you know, and we just provide support for, um, for one another. Um, I think it's a very, very great, it's been a very great learning experience for me personally, and I think it's a very good place to learn as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm glad that we were able to keep you here in the Valley. Yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Heath, I'm sure there is a, a fascinating story to tell about starting a new residency program during a pandemic year. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, um, it, 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 it uh, was a challenge, 
to say the least. Um, but uh, Dr. Fish, what you walk away with is that we, uh, us guys with gray hair, um, are leaving our profession to uh, the best group of physicians I think we possibly can. Um, they are dedicated, they are compassionate, they care about each other, they care about their patients, and they are willing to take and do whatever is necessary to provide that care. Um, so I, I just couldn't be prouder of the whole Department of Internal Medicine in, in terms of the uh, effort and, um, and that goes for DHR, Valley Baptist, and, and NAP. I, I think they, they all, everyone needs to pat themselves on the back. I like to do that every once in a while to have people pat themselves on the back because they have just done a wonderful job. Um, we're, we're not done yet with COVID. Um, that we're starting to see another surge and, and we're gonna be tested again. Um, but again, I feel like we have the personal resources to take on that challenge. Um, I, I kind of changed the subject just a little bit, um, a, a lot, just kind of for the broader internal medicine, uh, just a couple of comments to, to um, the students as they start looking at programs and so forth. I think the, the, this is different than applying to medical school. In medical school, you're just trying to get in. And once you get in, then, then you're good. Uh, residency is a little different. You're, you're um, trying to find a place that makes you happy. Um, and, um, and that should be your mission as you look at programs. What places do I feel like I can work with people directly and closely for long periods of time. Is this the kind of feeling that, that I have that this is going to be the place for, for me? So I, I think that's the important measuring stick. In, in terms of fellowships, what fellowship directors say is they want good general internists. They'll, they'll teach you cardiology. They'll teach you nephrology. They just want a good, solid general internist. And, and I think any of the programs in the Valley will provide that type of training um, because you have the patient care responsibilities and the clinical uh, care that, that, that these complex patients uh, require. Uh, I think you'll be in good stead as a, you, you'll be trained as a good general internist. And, and you have the tools from medical school, and, and now it's up to you to use those tools. You guys are, um, are, are learners that have been equipped to continue learning, and um, the, the rise is just uh, logarithmic in terms of the amount of, of learning you will do um, during residency in the first part of your career. Um, so again, I, I, I've got great faculty, I've got great residents, uh, I'm awfully proud of them, and uh, um, you know, I think uh, we, we're a, a good place um, it, to, to come to, uh, we'll, we'll train you, we'll get you um, uh, to be able to be a, a fine internist. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Heath. Dr. Dr. Bella, Dr. Jafari, thank you all very much for being here with us tonight. Uh, and again, could you leave us some contact information, perhaps to your program coordinator, in case uh, any of the students have some follow-up questions uh, for you, okay? Yes, sir. Very good, thank you again. So let's uh, switch one more time, one last time, to the internal medicine program at Valley Baptist. So this is the uh, the grand dame of uh, internal medicine programs in the valley, right? 20, how many years old? Yolanda Fedleon, welcome. Program coordinator. <laughs> how many years? Hi, everyone. 
Yeah, I'd have to uh, count it out. In yeah, 2002. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come up on 20 years here. Wow. Just barely out of adolescence. Okay. <laughs> and Dr. Garcia, Laura Garcia is program uh, uh, director. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And I think I saw Shumara Andoy. There you are. Yes, graduated last year. There you are. You've survived. You look great. Good to see you. Anybody else from your program here with you, Dr. Garcia? Um, we also have um, Kevin and Gilbert. They're newly minted PGY1s. We thought it would be good okay. to have them give their perspective to uh, sure. recruiting new uh, medical students. Great. Okay. Welcome all. Please go ahead, Dr. Garcia. So, you know, it's it's really great to, to hear about all the other programs. Um, you know, Dr. Gentino, Dr. Heath, and, and Dr. Bello um, going over the different opportunities that UTRGB has to offer in the vein of internal medicine. Um, internal medicine is such a joy um, to uh, be able to practice. It has so many um, different aspects to it that people can really find what makes them happy and gives them that, that passion. Um, and I think we don't get here without having passion. Oh, I forgot to mention Dr. Ramos, our APD is also on the, um, the Zoom call. So he'll be here as well to chime in in case um, anyone has any questions. Um, so we're located here at Valley Baptist. You can see our um, hospital uh, tower here. That's our South Tower main tower. And we're located in Harlingen. Um, an hour or 40 or 45 minutes away from South Padre Island. I think that's always something that we kind of highlight when we're talking to people. Um, they, they know where that is. So it's a good um, homing beacon um, when we're talking to people that are from the area. Um, and as other um, programs have mentioned tonight, it's always good to have uh, the perspective of what the mission is for that program. And for us, you know, it, first and foremost, we want to make sure we're providing excellent patient care, doing our best for um, our patients, and no matter what venue that we're, we're seeing them in, providing that continuity, um, advocating for those patients to try and have them get the best outcome that they can. And um, we're a learning program. We're, we're um, educating residents to go forward and provide that care too. So we want to make sure we're learning something every day, making sure to instill passion and, and, and having fun as we go. Um, and I think part of that is um, in a teaching program, you intersect with so many learners, which I think keeps things fresh and exciting. Um, the residents teaching the medical students, um, the attendings, uh, getting to see you know new people come in and, and and getting to use up all our old stories. <laughs> so we get to sell our stories again and, and um, teach people things. Um, and I think it's never been more important during this past few years, but well being for our residents and making that a priority, um, being healthy and, and taking care of, um, you know, how we're, how we're doing and checking in with everybody just to make sure that they're continuing to be able to provide that care. So these are the different faculty that are assigned in our location. We have Dr. Ramos, who's also on the call that we mentioned, um, Dr. Sufrant, um, who's our continuity clinic director, um, Dr. Campo, and our administrative um, staff, Yolanda Fellian, who's our program coordinator. And I agree with you very much, Dr. Fish, when talking about how important the program coordinator is in the, the lives of the medical students. They really are the heart. And so um, she's been with us since the beginning of the program. And we've been very lucky to have her expertise and guidance um, during all the years that we've been training residents. And of course we have Veronica um, as well, who works in our office. She's our administrative yeah. assistant, also very vital to our daily operations, keeping everybody on, the, on track. So just a little bit of history. Um, like we mentioned, um, we first applied in 2001. We started in 2002. We've had 113 graduates come through our program. Um, as far as fellowship opportunities, we've had 35 graduates pursue fellowship, and those are the various um, disciplines that they've matched to. And we even have a few double board, which is interesting. So um, ob and emergency medicine. Um, and you know, research is also a scholarly activity and being a good citizen of internal medicine and, and being a physician. And part of that is participating in scholarly activity. And our residents have been very successful and it's something that they enjoy participating in. And as um, has been mentioned in, um, in some previous presentations, um, there is some assistance uh, to residents to be able to participate in meetings, which I think is important to, to show them the, the bigger picture and have them make connections. 
um, because I think it makes us all better to see how other people and what other people are doing. So last year um, was the first year that we did an all virtual um, match or excuse me, all virtual interview season. And we're very happy with our uh, group that we had. Um, they're quickly adapting um, to the pandemic and everything that goes along with it. I think we had a lot of practice last year, making sure everybody's safe and, and making sure they feel prepared and confident uh, to go to day to day and, and um, be able to um, do that. Um, and in partnership and supervision with their senior residents and attending physicians. And two of our um, new intern group, um, Kevin Aranguri and uh, Gilberto Flores are on the call. So that you'll be meeting them a little bit later and they'll tell you about their first two months of training. So I think that um, like I had said before, it's so important to talk to somebody that's gonna be in the shoes um, that you're gonna be uh, in short lane when you're after your interview season. So I'm going to hand this off to uh, Dr. Andoy. So good evening, everybody. My name is Shamar Andoy. I'm a PGY2 at Valley Baptist Internal Medicine Program. Um, I think my position is a little bit unique. I'm one of the few um, graduates from the UCRGB School of Medicine who decided to stay in the Valley. I have a couple of classmates in the DHR program and uh, both internal and family. But I personally chose to come to Valley Baptist um, I had a unique opportunity of actually rotating here during my third and my fourth year. And one of the few things that convinced me to stay was one, the, the program uh, mission has really resonated with me. Every single day I worked with residents who were passionate about caring for their patient and putting their patient's care first. Um, Valley Baptist uh, General Medicine Program was really the place where I learned what, you know, becoming a patient advocate really is. And, um, uh, but more importantly, I also, they also stress learning and being passionate about what you do. And so uh, because of those three things that I, I really felt like they embodied all of those uh, things that they said in their mission. And so I decided that it was a great place to be for my next three years of residency. Um, next slide. So uh, a little bit about us. So our rotations are divided into in, uh, inpatient rotations and elective and outpatient rotations. So we have three different uh, inpatient teams. We have yellow, uh, green, and an MICU team as well. So our green team is ran by our UTRGV faculty, which is Dr. Garcia, Dr. Ramos, Dr. Campo, Dr. Safran. And the yellow team is currently run by the hospitalist group in Valley Baptist. And so in green, we get a lot of focus on teaching, uh, whereas in the hospitalist, the yellow team, it, it mirrors a little bit more of like what the hospitalist uh, service would be like. Um, and then as I mentioned previously, we also have an MICU team. So all of these teams are made up of two seniors and two interns, and each intern works directly with a senior, but we also work all together as a team to help each other out. And then all of us are overseen by an attending. So you're never alone when it comes to making decisions. So you always have somebody behind you to help you and back you up in case uh, you run into a wall, you don't know something and you wanna ask somebody who may have an expertise. Um, on top of that, we also have consultants who we're basically on, uh, uh, we, who, we can text anytime we need to, uh, anytime we have a question. And so that also is another layer of, um, in a sense, protection in case you have something that you want to ask. Um, I mentioned previously that we have uh, outpatient and electives as well. So we have three different clinic sites. We rotate through Sioux Clinica, Harlingen, Rio Grande State Center, and the VA uh, clinic uh, here in Harlingen. And uh, so each intern basically gets a, uh, assigned to one of the clinics, and then you stay with that clinic for the rest of the three years that you are in residency. And uh, every year we have one month of ambulatory and in every other rotation, apart from the ambulatory month, we actually get half a day clinics, uh, at least two to at least two weeks, and sometimes every every week. 
And so even though we are not in our ambulatory months, we get the opportunity to follow up with our patients and you don't miss um, important uh, appointments that you made with your, with your patients. And so what are we about? We're about great chemistry between faculty, residents, medical students. We get PA and pharmacy students, and we also learn from each other. They learn from us, we learn from them. And we have a good balance between autonomy and supervision. Again, we, can, we have enough independence to make a plan for our patients, but we also have a lot of people who are overseeing us so that we are not falling to, uh, by ourselves. And so uh, again, it's a great place to practice. And so as a medical student, you know, what do you look for in a program? Are you looking for research? Over the past couple of years, we've had residents go to present cases, QI uh, projects, research projects on uh, multiple different conferences in the past. Um, if there is a topic that you are interested in, more than likely you have a chance to make it happen in Valley Baptist. Are you looking for a great place to develop good relationship with your coworkers? Uh, we, we have that as well. So again, we get along well with our faculty. Uh, we're basically on texting basis with most of our uh, attendings and the, the medical we try to involve the medical students in a lot of our group discussions, we try to make them help with uh, the patient care as well to really integrate them into our team so that make, we make sure that nobody is left out. Um, as far as travel time between uh, hospital to clinic or from your uh, place of living to the rotation sites, everything in Harlingen is so nearby, you're not gonna be driving more than 15 minutes at a time. Um, again, I live about uh, in an apartment with Valor, and it takes me at most 15 minutes on our busy, busy time of the, the afternoon. Um, and if you have a family, uh, more than half of our residents have a family, uh, and a lot of our attendings who were actually uh, residents in, the, uh, in our program, so, and even if they have left for a uh, fellowship, some of them actually decide to come back down to Harlingen to practice and settle with their family. So it's more than safe for you and your family. And then as far as night call, we really don't have a night call um, in our intern year. We have a night float rotation during our starting our second year. And we have basically we do two weeks at a time and during those uh, two weeks, we get two days off. Uh, so you're never really, you never have any 24 hour call in our program. And so the choice is yours. Uh, a lot of the medical students rate our program as uh, above average in comparison to all uh, US medical, 151 US medical schools and then it's ranked highest amongst the eight UTRGV uh, School of Medicine purchase um, because we try so hard to make sure that our, our medical students are engaged. Um, so Valley Baptist can be your home for the next three years and we'd be more than happy to have you join our family. Thank you, Shamara. Here we go. Yeah, hi, uh, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Kevin Arungri. I'm originally from Anaheim in Southern California. I'm a PGY1 at the program and uh, I'm a graduate of Xochicalco University in Baja California in Mexico. So I'll give you all uh, some info on the work environment at our program, um, which I would pretty much describe as, as super awesome. I mean, just based off of my recent experience here, uh, I'm pretty stoked that I can say that in addition to, to having an interest in our academic development, um, you know, providing boards, prep sessions and such, uh, the program really takes a big role in our well-being. You know, the ensuring a sustainable workload, particularly for the interns, um, you know, has been my experience. And so uh, I think as a med student, one of the things that I wanted to ensure was a, a really great work environment, you know, a great work life. And when I first got here it was something that I was looking for. 
And I was happily able to mention to everyone, you know, here that I love the culture at the program. Um, And after a full month of an intensive inpatient rotation, you know, I've not been disappointed. Uh, Everyone, you know, is incredibly helpful all the time, working like as a team first. Um, And especially as an intern, you know, given uh, we're expected to perform at a high level, it's awesome to really have senior residents who, who look out for us, you know, who support us when we struggle with the electronic medical record or with the specifics of patient management. Um, you know, and, and, and so when I say I love the culture here, what I really mean to say is that the program does a great job of creating a mentality where everyone is always willing to help each other out with pretty much anything. And, and I think inpatient um, is probably the toughest rotation you can get to start your intern year with. Um, it's fast. There's always a lot of work to do. And a lot of people are depending on, on your medical knowledge and your patient care skills to finish your responsibilities in a timely manner. And it's not easy to do, you know, necessarily, or it's not easy to do when, when you don't know, you know, you're new to the electronic medical record system, uh, or you don't even know, you know, which tower your patient's room is located in. Um, geez, getting lost when you're pressed for time is really not fun. Um, but in my experience, you know, my, my seniors did a particularly great job of gauging when I needed to be literally walked through a process step by step. Step, um, and when to add re- responsibilities to keep me quickly, you know, improving to my best potential. So um, I think really the importance of that and of that type of work environment is that it creates a sense of confidence in yourself, you know, especially when you're starting out, you know, you're not getting pummeled left and right because your patient load is too intensive or because you didn't finish your progress notes or because you didn't have enough time to, to study for the next day. You know, I think um, Uh, obviously, where I think it should be obvious that the purpose of intern year is not for you to suffer or learn things all on your own, uh, you know, the hard way. I think uh, my patients were there, I mean, my seniors were there for me uh, to to help me when I struggled and knew when to kind of step back also to let me progress and and ultimately ensure that I I was optimizing like my learning experience, you know. And so um, I think what I'm trying to get at is that everyone here knows that everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses. And in our work environment, no one holds them against you. You know, it's great to have your program directors and your senior residents be able to identify your strengths and your weaknesses and really lend a hand when they see you inevitably struggle with some aspect of your intern year, um, especially during your inpatient rotation, which was my my experience. Um, You know, when days can be lengthy, uh, time is of the essence and patients' timely care really kind of depends on you and and the rest of the team, you know. so I think uh, maybe while we're on the topic of lengthy days, I'll, I'll just say again how awesome I think it is that the program really protects your time and your well-being um, because it makes such a huge difference to get the study time that you need, um, maybe even more important, the sleep that you need you know, to continue going to work every day, happy, um, excited to see more patients, uh, you know, and I think, of course, that's the whole point, you know, and so... Um, before my, my, tum- my time runs out, you know, I'll leave you with a, a, some advice on getting ready for residency. I think, first of all, the most important thing is don't stress. I think um, you've prepared yourself throughout medical school for the next step um, you know, of your medical career you know, in your residency, even if it doesn't always feel like it. So uh, I think you know, take that, t- that free time you have and, and just sort of relax. Um, I know some of us aren't the best at relaxing, but really take your time to yourself or with your family or to get outdoors or binge watch Netflix, you know, whatever your cup of spice is, um, but enjoy your free time so that uh, you know, you're fresh at the start of your residency. So thank you very much for, for the time. Thank you, Kevin. And just Thank to you. jump onto his comments, um, you know, we really do in, in all of the programs, I think do a great job of, of really keeping on top of duty hours. And I think that that has a solid foundation to allowing um, uh, interns and residents to be able to take care of the other aspects, you know, your personal um, time that you need to um, be able to come to work and ready to play um, in the morning and take care of your patients. Um, so we'll move on to our next um, speaker, um, Gilbert Flores. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gilbert Flores. I'm a PGY1. Uh, I am originally from Brownsville, Texas. I went to school in Guadalajara, Mexico, to UAG, and uh, I'm here to talk about one of the curriculars we have as residents and staff uh, for the residents uh, didactics. And so we do uh, didactic, didactics is a dedicated time for us. Uh, to cover patient case reports as well as uh, practice evidence-based medicine. Additionally, we have a morning report, noon conference, uh, check-in rounds, m and uh, resident conferences and grand rounds as well as ambulatory care presentations. 
which are all extremely beneficial and uh, really uh, help model us as physicians in the future. Additionally, we have uh, access to these meetings and conferences in, uh, uh, via Zoom due to uh, the, the current situation with COVID. And so it allows us to either access via, via Zoom or in person in the classroom. And so that's really makes us uh, efficient and as well um, uh, very practical because if you're in the clinic and you need to, uh, you're unable to make it, you can still attend while uh, entering the, the Zoom call. And uh, also, uh, we're currently taking all the precautions that, that are needed for COVID-19. And so that's also really helpful and, and securing for us as residents, especially, you know, interns, um, that uh, all this is fairly new. Um, as far as uh, presenting and preparing for, you know, your didactics or morning report, uh, in my experience, I started off in ICU. And so it was also a very hectic schedule um, because it was all, all new to me. but. Um, pretty much just gathering all your information, getting to, getting to know your patients really well and having the ability to uh, gather all the information with time so that when you go to present, you are prepared and uh, all of the, the, the data is, is uh, sequentially uh, making, making sense for your case report. And so um, it's, it's very, it was very nervous for me uh, initially. However, once, you know, once I did my first presentation, I could immediately feel uh, the other residents as well as the, the attendings, you know, uh, giving me support and guiding me through this process. Uh, after that, the second presentation for me went a lot smoother and uh, I had no doubt that, you know, I had, uh, I was in the right program. And so uh, in this residency program at Valley Baptist, you're provided with multiple um, online resources for uh, for these presentations as well as uh, like journals and access medicine through the online uh, platform and uh, also you have uh, the library which is uh, this uh, UTRGV School of Medicine library right across the street which makes it very uh, um, efficient to be able to complete these uh, extra assignments that we have and so that library is is is, is pretty big and then it also it has multiple study rooms um, which is great to have just right across the street and so um, yeah I think that uh, you know this this is a great program and uh, as far as the support that you get when creating these presentations your seniors uh, really do help you in, in creating the best presentation and uh, guiding you what to put on uh, in the presentation and what not to, to place in there and so that's always reassuring because it's definitely a learning curve. And so having that support is what really helps you become a, a better physician. And, uh, and that goes all around throughout the program. So that's, uh, it's really great. Thank you, Gilbert. I think we have something in the chat. Let me just see if we have a question. Oh, thanking um, the residents. Okay. Um, and we'll uh, put our contact information in the okay. chat as well. Yeah. And so, um, Sorry, Dr. Fish, we have just like two more slides. Yes, so here's sure. our contact information. Um, and just for mine in particular, it's Laura Doc Garcia one. There's also a Laura Doc Garcia and a Laura Doc Garcia zero one. So just to make sure that you're emailing the right email and we're all available in case you have questions. Um, but we, you know, imagine a life in, in RGV and, and think about joining the UTRGV family. Um, Valley Baptist is, is very excited. Um, you know, to, to get a new interview season and, and meet um, more um, people aspiring to internal medicine. And, um, and now we'll, if anyone has any questions. Thank you all very much. Yolanda, do you have any comments? Uh, you've, uh, I think like me, you've come to realize that all these students are just getting younger every year. Yeah, they are. I, I think no. they're getting younger. I'm not getting older. No, definitely not. <laughs> It's working the other way around. Um, no, I'm just uh, grateful to be here. Um, I'm happy to uh, have another recruiting season uh, coming our way. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a virtual interview season, but it'll be good. Uh, we're always happy to have our medical students from UTRGV GV rotate with us, and uh, I hope that they get a good learning experience and get to see uh, firsthand what our program has to offer. And uh, so we look forward to having them apply to our program this uh, season and hopefully uh, 
we can snatch one of them up or several of them up. <laughs> but we're, we're happy to be here. Very good. Thank you. Very good to see you again, Yolanda. It's nice to see you too, Dr. Fish. Okay. Any questions, anyone? I had one, but Dr. Ramos uh, answered it in the group chat. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you, uh, Nina uh, Barrientos from the GME office and Melody Portillo from our Careers in Medicine office here in the Student Affairs for putting this all together. These uh, sessions have been recorded and uh, we will post them and, and let you all know uh, how to access them uh, and, and other students who perhaps were not able to attend tonight. So again, thank everybody for your participation. I think these were very meaningful uh, sessions to hear uh, and really very, very uplifting to hear how well these programs are developing and, uh, and the good work that you all do. So thank you very much. Have a very good evening. Thank you, Dr. Fish.